whatever that means. All right, share screen too. All right, can you guys see my screen again? All right, just as a warning, we are being recorded now. All right. So if you say dupe edges and then you select all this stuff and then it sort of generates all these edge curves for you. Um, you can do the same thing with intersect, right? It'll generate all those, those curves. Um, the one thing I will mention is that when you're doing the intersect, there's a lot of things intersecting here. So you start to increase the amount of curves and lines, um, you know, dramatically, right? So um, sometimes that intersect tool will take forever. And if you try to do everything all at once, then it feels like it, like the, the memory just becomes impossible. So what I do is I go into top view and I just select a portion of my model at a time, right? So let's say I've, I've just selected 18, 1,872 poly surfaces in one extrusion. I'll type in intersect. And I'll just do the intersections for those, right? Okay, so again, this is a rehatch of, of the other day, but for those that weren't here the other day or are still going through this process, right, the intersect. I'm just going through and I'm intersecting portions of this, right, making sure I overlap, like, you know, the next, uh, the next sort of uh, third of, the, of this sort of nine square grid. Um, I'll probably make sure that I overlap with what I did previously, just to make sure that I don't, I'm not missing any intersection lines. I'm just going to hit escape to cancel that. Um, right, just hit undo to get rid of those extra curves that I just generated. There we are. Um, so anyway, to get the scene silhouette, again, I just want to make sure that I have this set up perfectly. Right. So again, these are just reminders. We've done this before. We've been here multiple times. Um, but again, I go to my viewport uh, label. I can, I can click on that menu and, and pull this menu out, set view. And here I can you know, set it to anything I want, including isometric. I believe this is Northwest isometric, right? Um, you're, you can just pick which one you want. If you have any floaters, like let's say I, I went through and I, I started to go through each view to see the one that I liked the best, I thought was the most interesting. Right. It wasn't northeast. Maybe it was northwest. Yeah, it sure was. Look at that. I like that better. I don't know why. Uh, if you have any floaters or anything like over here, you can always select them and delete them just to, you know, so this doesn't look like complete science fiction. But, um, you know, that, that there's a stacking logic here. And, and if there's no stack underneath something, then it, that, that, that sort of uh, that logic goes poof in everybody's head. Um, but from here, I'm ready to do several things, right? I can select all this stuff at once and type in make 2D. There we go. And I'm gonna turn everything off down here except for the scene silhouette and the viewport rectangle. Viewport rectangle, again, is this sort of border around the viewport. and It'll help us line up the drawing precisely with the, um, the derivative uh, uh, um, um, rendering, right? The, the sort of PNG that we take out of here. Okay. And so it's gonna do that. It'll give us all of the visible lines as well, um, but uh, I can turn those off or just delete that layer entirely and just keep the scene silhouette, okay. which will then show up in the top view over here, right? The viewport rectangle, you can see, I'm still in parallel view, but you can see over here on the XY plane, we have those things laid out for me, right? Let me just go back to top view so you can see it. Just in case you don't both trust me. Yeah, what if? I don't care. I'll, I'll still sleep at night, but here we go. Bam, presto, right? So there we are. Um, there it is. And what I can do is I can export that as an Illustrator file. Select it all, file, pull down, export selected, save as an AI, just leave the settings as default. Okay. In the meantime, we have one more thing we need to do in Rhino. Right, and that is bring this rendering out, capture that that viewport render mode thing. Um, but we need to turn on, we need to we need to adjust some settings so that the lines and curves that we generated actually render out as well. Okay, um, so let's do that. I'm going to turn off the Make 2D layer and expand my 
axon viewport here, my parallel projection viewport. Paraline drawing, right? All right, there we go. Um, I'm gonna turn on my edge curves layer, right? Those are all the curves I generated from the dupe edges and the intersect tool. Look at that. Now that looks like a line drawing and the rendering composited together already, right? We're just missing that silhouette. Dang, I wish there was a easier way to do that silhouette. Man, my life would be like, I'd probably get twice as much work done in my entire life if, if, it, if we had a bed, better scene silhouette tool here. Anyway, um, so I'm just gonna go to tools, pull down, right? This is where we find all, most, almost all the settings in Rhino right here. Tools pull down and then the options down at the very bottom of that menu, right? Just holding my cursor here, see that? Tools pull down, options. So bring up a box with all these options. Down at the very bottom of this left-hand menu, our view. I can expand that carrot out, go to display modes, expand that carrot out, and go to, in this case, the rendered mode, right? And it's highlighted in blue, rendered, because we actually have we actually have this in, currently our viewport is set to rendered mode. So as long as that's what the active viewport mode is. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I, I click on show curves. You can turn off, if, if the other day you turned on show ISO curves, you can just turn that one off. I just want show curves, show curves, clicked on. By default, yours probably isn't clicked on, right? So I'm just gonna make sure that that's clicked on. Sometime today, preferably. There we go. I turned it off. It took a while for it to, I was clicking it on and off, not realizing that it was updating. When you're done with that, you can hit okay, right? Then yours should look like this too. All the curves show up, all these lines show up along with the surface geometry. And from here, I can just go view, capture, to file, right? Just like we've done in the past when we're just doing a, a sort of soft, soft shadow underlay, base underlay for a line drawing. Let's take a look at these settings that pop up. There is an important thing to mention here, and that is these things should be high resolution. I'm gonna be printing these out potentially for you um, for this uh, um, exhibit up, up on the, uh, in the library. Um, and so I asked that the, what is this doing? What in the world? Microsoft Edge, well, thanks. Man, I must be getting old. I remember when the browser in Windows used to be called Internet Explorer. All right, here we go. View capture settings, right? I want to, A, make sure, be very, 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 very careful about this. Very important. Set it to transparent background. I do not want to have an opaque background. What I'd love to do is take all of these PDFs and begin to place them in InDesign and then like make a little aggregate city where everybody has a block Right, and then I make this larger sort of metropolis. That'd be so cool. You know what would make that really a big pain in the ass? Is if you don't check transparent background. So check transparent background on, okay? Please, for the love of God. All right, the other thing, we're looking at the size, okay? So let's think about this for a moment. This is gonna be an 11, this is gonna go on 11 by 17. So the um, uh, landscape mode, right? And so if we think about this, let's just look at this viewport uh, preview right here, right? So let's pretend that this is 11 by 17. That means that the top, the sort of height is 11 inches, okay? So if we think about a 300 DPI um, image, let me just turn off, sorry, my thing is, my, my phone keeps beeping at me. Um, I don't know why people text me in the middle of class. Um, so 11 inches, 300 pixels per inch, that's gonna be 3,300 pixels in height, right? It's telling us right now that it's 2,079 pixels by height. So what I can do is I can just increase the scale, maybe use these uh, little arrows to increase it a little at a time. What I wanna do is I wanna look at this and I wanna see and make sure, I'll go maybe to 1.5. I just wanna make sure that this lowest dimension is, is right around 3,300 or maybe a little over. It's a little under, maybe I'll see if I can get it just a little over. There we go, 3326, right? That ensures that the output, when sized into 11 by 17, the effective PPI will be at least 300, 300 DPI, all right? So, um, so that's what I'm doing, right? I'm just going here, transparent background, and I'm adjusting the scale until this resolution, the lowest, the height, right? The sort of uh, Y dimension in pixels 
is 3,300 pixels or higher. Okay, I'm gonna hit okay. When I do that, it's gonna re-render this out to slightly larger. Okay, I'm gonna hit okay. It was one other thing, right? We made sure that transparent background box was checked. Don't do it to me, make sure that's checked. So the last thing to do is here, right? Save as type, and by default, it'll be a JPEG. And the JPEG will get rid of that transparent background, damn it. So again, I can't tell you how many times I forget this myself. Sometimes when I get in a hurry, adjust this to a PNG format, okay? PNG will preserve those alpha channels. In other words, that transparent background, right? So make sure that you, you save it as a PNG file, all right? Ta-da. And hit save. Okay. And just like a cooking show, here's the results when we composite it together. Let's see what these things look like. Again, we've been here mo before mostly, and there's nothing new here, right? Um, so let me go to aggregate silhouette. Let's open that file. So this is the file that I got out of out of Rhino. Kind of goofy looking, right? So a couple of things we need to do in Illustrator. One. We need to change the document size, right? The page, the, pa the paper, the frame. So we're gonna go to document setup, edit artboards. And over here, it'll tell us right now, the width is eight and a half and the height is 11. I'm gonna change the width to 17. Boom, now it's 11 by 17 in landscape orientation, which I love a lot. Now I've selected all of the line drawing information that, that I brought in, out in from Rhino. So the viewport rectangle and the scene silhouette inside. Um, I'm gonna go to, and look at the settings for the X and Y position of this drawing information, as well as its width and height. I'm gonna adjust the height to 11. Um, hopefully you have this chain that constrains the width and the height so that thing keeps things proportional clicked on. If you do that, then what happens is as I adjust the height, the width adjusts with it in order to maintain the proportions of the drawing, right? And then last but not least, I'm, I'm sort of looking at the reference point, the center point of my drawing. I wanna make it align with the center point of my document. That center point would be 8.5 inches over in the X and 5.5 in the Y. So I'll go ahead and enter those in precisely right here. Boom, all right. And then last but not least, I'm gonna go to the layers menu, create a new layer, drag it to the bottom. I'll lock these really quickly. File, place, I'm gonna place that, um, let's see here. No, those are old. Aggregate PNG, there we go. And I'll place this PNG file that we created, right? Now look what happens when I place it. It's like way large, right? It's much larger than my 11 by 17 document, right? Not a huge surprise. So I need to also match the middle point of this up with the middle point of the document. So go ahead and do that. In X, I know that that's going to be, well, half of 17, so 8.5, right? And in Y, it's gonna be half of 11, so 5.5, and then we're just, just adjust the height, just like we did with the other one, 11 inches, boom, all right. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, now I can go ahead and lock that one. I can turn the viewport rectangle off, and I'll unlock my visible scene silhouette curves. There we have it. Now, you'll notice that the scene silhouette needs a little bit of cleanup here. And so that's what took me about 20 minutes, was to just go around and start to complete these. Just going around and boom, boom, boom. Making sure that they're all the same line weight. So maybe I select all of these things and adjust the line weight down to like 0.75 or something like that. You know, some of these already have an existing line. So get, get used to just sort of hitting command plus, command minus to zoom in on different places here. Oh, really, come on. Here, I don't know why it's not letting me select. Stuff. Oh, it's because I have everything selected. Sorry, I'll try to act smarter for the rest of, of our hour here, All right? But again, I'm just sort of going through and very quickly, you know, sometimes I can just delete some of these things, right? Just boom, boom, you know? Just give this drawing a little bit of TLC, right? It's all it needs is a little bit of love and just a little bit of care. The human touch, there we are. You can always just drag that one around, resize it, snap, snap. Snap, snap, okay. And it's really just, you know, carefully go all the way around your, your scene silhouette. I mean, if you wanna pan, right? All you have to do is hold down your space bar, your, your key, 
your space key on your keyboard. And it turns your cursor to a hand and you can just click and, and drag, right, to move around nice and easy while you're zoomed in, right? You just go around the whole thing, right? This is what mine looked like when I got to the end, right? So you can see I went through and audited the whole thing, even these little holes right here, just sort of cleaned it up just really quickly, right? And look at how nicely that pops, precisely. And now, final and last step, file, file save as. Save it as an Illustrator file, of course, but then you can also save as a native PDF. Then that PDF is what you upload. It's that simple. Save PDF. Then you come back to Canvas and upload it. All right. So that's as as uh, that that was a lot of stuff that we did on Monday. Um, plus just making you know making sure that I I sort of uh, uh, go over again just sort of you know what to do here in Illustrator and. Uh, brings you right up to the point of, of submitting it, okay? And then, like I said, what's nice about these is that, you know, I also sort of have this idea of tiling all of these things together to make a nice little, you know, metropolis or cityscape, right? So at this point, you guys should be working. I'll just show you what I, what I mean here really quickly. I'll just open up some InDesign, whatever, just a new document. Hey, Roger, are you still in, by the way? Just curious. If not, that's fine. What? I'm here. You're here? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll have a, a latest and greatest sort of uh, inside out studio book um, with everybody's work in it from both spring and fall here coming up soon. So I'll be in contact with you about that. Just to share it with you. Oh, cool. Yeah, we, we did Inside Out Studio again this fall. So a great example, let's see. Did you, is it each um, each uh, semester or each class or did you combine them? They're kind of combined, oh, right? Nice. So the overall sort of idea and, and the research and stuff like that. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, it's turned out really nice. I'll show you here in a minute. Um, but So if you guys think about this for a moment, right? What I can do is I can begin to take everybody's and and then make a sort of aggregate city here. But that only works because the transparent background, right? So please, please, for the love of God, make sure you, you toggle that transparent background on. You'd be surprised how many people forget that. And then I'm left trying to fix it myself the hard way. 30 times or 20 times or 10 times, however many times it is, right? So yeah, it starts to build up into a nice little city there. And everybody's unit's different and each configuration is different. This is a repeat, right? So anyway, um, I'm gonna stop sharing and stop recording. And, uh, and then I'm around just to help, right? So speak up if you need help. Um, if not, that's fine, but uh, I'm gonna stop sharing, stop recording.